are marching in the light of God. See, I'm back in any Quakos. Y'all took me back to middle school. I learned that song when I was about 12 years old. I said, wait a minute, I know this one. Bless God, we are marching, we are marching. Father God, thank you so much for joy and celebration. Thank you for us being able to just enjoy one another and enjoy you for this truly is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are truly glad in it. God, thank you for blessing our time together. Your spirit is already moving in this place. And we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you. Father God, we know that you're in this message. Your word is going to go forth and it's going to bless. Lord Jesus, allow me to step back while you step up and let your Holy Spirit have his time, Lord Jesus, and spread your word. May all be blessed under the hearing of my voice, which is you speaking through me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Y'all yeah, yeah, got me extra excited. I, you know, before you preach for any ministers, preachers out there, you know, as you're, you're preparing to deliver word, there's a, a certain uh, excited and anxiousness that you get because you're about to go on and the, you're looking and you're like, okay, is it, is it time yet? And you're like, no. It's almost like double dutch. You're just ready to <laughs> jump on in and your time comes. You say, oh, I got it now. So I, I do, oh, Lord, we just going to jump with this thing right here. We're going to jump with this right here. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not be in want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. Oh, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. I, as even as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, there you are. You are with me, O oh Lord, and I thank you. I thank God for he has given us so much. Life, breath, health, in whatever manner we have it. We may not feel the way that we may want to feel, but my Lord, Thank you, Lord, for the fact that we do feel. We are here together, gathered in his name. Mm. And I, I'm just so happy to be his. And when I think of, on the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my heart cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Now, if you are sitting in your seat or, or listening online and you say, well, I don't know what to thank God for. Life, <laughs> breath, first and foremost, salvation. Something we could not obtain on our own, a gift. For, for by grace are we saved through faith. There's nothing we could ever do to earn it. The one who gave it all, shed his blood on Calvary, said, just believe. Have faith in me, and I will prove myself to you every single time. See, if you don't have anything to shout on right this minute, give it time. Because change will come in your life as you lean and depend on the Lord. And before you know it, you're going to have something to shout and sing for, whether it be a illness that the Lord worked through, whether it be something at school if you're in school or at work if you're at work, or with a family member who is pressing and you say, thank you, Jesus, when he reminds you of that prayer, when he reminds you of how his steadfast faith, he says, look, even when you are not faithful, I am faithful for I cannot go against myself. So as we're trusting and we're leaning on the Lord, and especially in times as they are in our society, in our community, in our nation, in our world, there are a lot of things that can make us doubt him. There are a lot of things that can make uh, people a little weary. I know, God, you're able, but it doesn't look like it's working out in my favor. 
I know, God, that you're able, but this isn't making any sense. I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm reading the word, I'm fellowshipping, but God, this situation in my life doesn't seem to be working itself out just as quickly as I would like, or just in the way that I would like. He says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And what is so awesome and what I love about God is it doesn't matter what it looks like. Rarely will it even look like the thing it's going to become. What matters most is I am. The great I am that we serve says you can always trust in me. You can always have faith in me. And our faith is a many splendid thing. And we're going to get into that a little bit. For it's not just something that we confess with our mouth, but it is something we live through our life. If I was to have a message title for today, it would be Walk It Out. Now, some of y'all now, it's not, maybe not the walk it out might come to your mind when I say walk it out, but you're going to see uh, where I'm going with that title. Uh, for when we acknowledge God and, and we celebrate him in our lives and we let his light shine through us and we walk out our faith, men are drawn to him. People who didn't know to have hope will have hope because of how we live, because of how we press, because how we persevere. But they're watching still on when we do falter, on when we do doubt, on when there are times when it's hard for us to believe. So saints, I am here today to encourage you as I encourage myself and am reminded to walk it out. Now, one of the chief examples that I have uh, comes from Matthew 14. What we find happening in Matthew chapter 14, and where I'm going to uh, read will be verse 22, but I'm going to just do an overview of verses 1 through 21. We find um, we have Jesus, who is truly an author and finisher of our work. He is who we model ourselves after. We have the same mind being you that is also in Christ Jesus, right? If we want to talk about character, if we want to talk about uh, what does it mean to be saved, we simply look at the life of Christ. We look at how he loved. We look at how he cared. We look at how he sacrificed and gave and always stood on truth. He was human. 100% God, yet still 100% man. His feelings ran deep. His physical exhaustion was true. There's nothing we can experience in this flesh that Christ didn't experience. See, our chief priest that sits on high knows all about our troubles because he's been there and he has done that. And he says, yea, I have overcome the world. So where we pick up in Matthew 14 is John the Baptist, the tale of him being beheaded. So this was Jesus' cousin, right? They knew each other from the womb, right? When Mary went to go visit Elizabeth, it said John leaped in Elizabeth's womb. Yeah, he went out in the wilderness and was preaching the coming of the Lord. He was a forerunner for Christ. Yeah, think about your cousin, your best cousin. Sometimes they might even be closer than some siblings of yours, right? And y'all are in this together. Y'all, man, just making through life. You know, and you have a task at hand. Imagine even more so for Jesus and for John. Ace, boom, coons, A1s from day one, right? Jesus gets word. John has been beheaded. He has not just lost a compatriot. He has not just lost a co-worker out in the field. He has lost his family. His cousin has been killed. Huh, for declaring the truth. Whenever we lose somebody that we love, there is grieving, there is sorrow. We miss them from our lives. Jesus knows what that grief is. Instantly, he was missing John from his life. 
he went off privately. Verse 13 goes into, you know, he went off to a private, solitary place. He wanted to be alone. He wanted to pray to his father. He wanted to grieve. He wanted to mourn. But guess what? People had needs, and they followed him. In his dark time, in the midst of his pain, a crowd has come for a healing. And we find in verse 14, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. We don't see anybody coming to Jesus and saying, Jesus, you need a hug? You know, you, you need a minute? You know, you want to talk about your pain? Everybody looked to Christ for their healing. And he gives us an example of where we look for ours. Ha. Huh. Because he always turned to the Father. So again, in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his loss, he was showing compassion. So dare we not say, when we're hurting, when we're angry, that we can't be compassionate. That is no excuse, saints. What we're going through is no excuse for us not to let our light shine every moment of every day. While we know we cannot do it in this flesh, we are sealed with the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Spirit will revive in us a loving kindness that will allow us to embrace one another. So first and foremost in your faith walk, don't let what you're going through taint who you must touch. Because see, you're still working. As long as we are on this earth, there is breath in our lungs, our blood is flowing, God has an assignment for us. People come and go. People are our assignments. They are our assignments. It might be a smile. It, it might be a hug. It might be a good word. It might be a testimony. But in the midst, and even in the midst of your hardest time, you can still have compassion. In the midst of your, your darkest season, you can still love. And God desires for you to still love, not shut down, not run away, not become hardened. But he says, turn to me. So the crowds came. They were healed. Then it was getting late, and, you know, and the disciples, Jesus, go ahead and send them away. We don't have, there's no pastor, you know, what is it, two piece and a biscuit hanging out around here. We don't have the food. You know, uh, they're, going, they're hungry. You see all those people? We can't feed them, Jesus. Tell them to go home now while it's still early for them to go. Huh. But he said, no. He, what do we have? We have five loaves and, and two fish. Bring them here. And then taking the loaves, verse 19, the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. I would count about at least one woman per man, you know. Maybe, a, a, you know, <laughs> mama giving me some numbers. Uh, she's throwing up some. Uh, one, two, three, four, five children, you know. Fed from five loaves and two fish. After giving thanks to God, you that one moment where you step back and what am I going to eat? And you look in the cabinet, you got a bunch of cans and stuff, but there's nothing in here. <laughs> yes, there is. I says, go ahead and, and, and bless that. Thank me for the provision and go ahead and cook you up some baked beans and hot dogs tonight because I have made your provision. So not only was Christ healing, he also performed the miracle of multiplying this food for the hungry multitude they went they got healed they got fed or oh, they had a great time but little did they know of the pain our lord was going through emotionally little do you know all of the times when ministers evangelists deacons deaconesses missionaries are in pain and they work little do you know of everything happening in their lives and they come in and they pray for any saint that comes up and says, can you pray for me? Pastors, pastors' wives, hallelujah, are always on duty. 
always on call. Regardless of what you may have going on in your life, your phone rings. Hey, now. The person on the other end isn't saying, not all the time, that may be, don't get me wrong, but may not lead with, is there something I can do for you? Before I get into what I need, do you need anything? But perhaps we should. Instead of always going with hands out, we should go with open arms and provide. Not just looking to receive, but look also to give. For we are human, and we look at our Lord and Savior, who was human, hurting, still gave, but still needed. So after everybody was fed, Jesus finally got his away time. Look, he put his disciples on a boat and said, look, y'all go, okay, they're good. I'm going to go up to this mountain. Christ went up to the mountain, and he met with God, and he spent time praying. Now, we find in the account in the book of Matthew, we're going to get into it with the walking with Paul, but it's the only account out of the three that are in the New Testament that mentions Paul. So, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find out why Paul was, why it's so important to think about Paul, and as I was studying and reading, I kind of got a new perspective um, and also for Christ, another reason he got away, uh, because the people wanted to make him king. You know, you healed me, you fed me, you the man, you, I'm going to put you in charge. We're going to do it now. We're going to do it right now. And it wasn't his appointed time. It was not the appointed way. Christ is like, look, y'all trying to, y'all, y'all jump in the cart before the horse. Y'all trying to jump it. I need to get away from y'all. Because if I just hang around, you will push me out of my season. People have a way of pushing us, if you let them, out of your season. We can push ourselves out of our season because you have a vision of what God is doing for you. Because you know, God, I, I feel as if you're taking me to this place. So you start preparing, but be mindful that you don't push beyond preparation. For God says that there is a time, there is a place, there is a season. Don't rush it. Out of season is just as bad as not at all. If Christ would have accepted his crown then and there, none of us would have been saved. But see, he, he knew, it was like, no, I have to listen to the Father. In the midst of my turmoil and my pain, and y'all kind of making me feel good maybe because you're like, we want you to be king, but I can't fall into that. I can't fall into um, accolade. I can't fall into praise because I still have a mission. So be mindful of what people may be trying to put on you. You want to weigh that against the Lord. So we pick up at verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat, and he sent them off. Um, verse 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water come he said then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus but when he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink cried out Lord save me immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him you of little faith why did you doubt oh Christ our Lord who pressed through this terribly hard day of hearing one of his beloved cousins, his, his, his worker in the kingdom had, had been slain, had been beheaded, and then he, he pressed through that and, and served those who needed healing, those who needed a touch, and then he fed through a miracle. And then he said, look, I need to go away. I just need some time with the Father. Ha! Huh. The storm came. And the disciples thought he was a ghost walking on the water. 
right? So this was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. You know, there were no uh, cell phones. They couldn't turn that flashlight on and say, who is that? You know, we didn't have any lights out there on the boat. It was pretty dark. Uh, but Jesus, you know, it is I. Huh. Peter's bold. If it is you, I I'll come. If it really is you, well, well then come on. Huh. Peter desired to be out on the water with Christ. And when he had his eyes fixed on Christ, he was able to do the impossible. He could walk on the water. Oh, as long as his eyes were fixed on Christ. As long as his faith was in what Christ could do. But distraction came. Winds rose up. Waves was beaten against him. Fear rose up in his heart. Doubt rose up in his heart. And immediately he began to sink. I can only imagine the hurt Christ may have felt. Saying, after you've seen me do everything that I have done, you still doubt me. After you were there and a part of it, you still did not believe that I would take care of you that I could bring you to me? You, you didn't trust me? Ye of little faith. See, our faith is not just the confession of our mouth, but it is what we do. It is our actions. While Peter stepped out on faith, yes, he did. And he was walking in faith, yes, he did. When the wind blew, he lost track of who he was supposed to be focusing on. When storms come up in our lives, we tend to lose track of who we're supposed to be focusing on. When pain and travail comes, when, when things don't go right, oh, God must be against me. He isn't for me anymore. I'm gonna have to just do it on my own. Look at all these things are going wrong, right? There's Murphy's rule of law. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong. And there are times and seasons where it feels like you're just operating in Murphy's Law. But take heart uh, because we know that we can trust in the Lord with all of our hearts, right? Proverbs 3 and 5 tells us not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. If you are out on the water right now, would you sink or would you walk? For looking at your relationship with the Lord and your faith in God's capacity yes. to hold you up and to get you through, would you be swimming or would you be cruising right along? Would you be walking it out? And so the questions we have to ask ourselves daily, questions I have to ask myself daily. And when I catch myself like, oh, wait, Lord, you're right. I, I need a reminder. Wait a minute. I think I might be sinking right now. Let me turn to your word. We, saw, we find in Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Oh, the very first thing I could imagine, you know, Peter was like, oh, there was fear. False evidence appearing real. We talk about it here all the time. What was there for Peter to be afraid of when he had Christ in front of him? What is it for us to be afraid of when we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us? We have the Spirit of God on the earth. We have Christ petitioning for us. For what do we have to be afraid? Mm. Is there anything that is impossible for God? Mark. 10 and 27. Jesus looked at them and said, with man it is impossible, but with God, for all things are possible with God. There's nothing we can't do that God desires for us to accomplish. There's nothing. There's no trial, no tribulation, no stress, no strain, no loss that we cannot move through. But where is your faith? Is your faith in God? Is your faith in the Lord or is it in you? Uh, we did not make us. We were made. 
by a loving God who says, look, I, let me be there with you. Walk it out. Let me see what you do with your faith, right? Because even in the midst of your pain, again, I still have an assignment for you. Will you trust me to work still for the kingdom when everything around you seems like it's falling down? But little do you know it's falling into place because God has an awesome plan. Mm, mm, mm. Psalm 138 and 8 reads, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hand. We have a purpose. It's going to be fulfilled. We can trust in the Lord. We find in Hebrews chapter 11, amen, verses 1 through 3, how we can have this assurance. Now, faith is in co the confidence and what hope. Let me start again. As I have the ESV, it's a little different. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Your confidence in God, your assurance in God, it's your faith. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of heaven divine. Do we remember that? Do we walk that every single day? When someone comes up and we just want to yell at them and bite their head off, are we compassionate because we're resting in our faith of God? Are we loving because we know that, God, there's a circumstance in my life going on. I don't get it. I would love to spend all day thinking about it, but you have work for me to do. So I will pray about it. I will trust in you and your ability to resolve it, and I'm going to move on and do what you call me to do, O oh Lord. Am I walking in that faith? This morning, Sunday school uh, lesson was about our works, yes. and it was about, it was looking at, you know, both kinds and both sides. While we are not saved by our works, our works do show our salvation. So what we do counts. What we do in our free time matters. Who we hang out with is of concern to God. Whether or not we're letting our light shine on Saturday night as opposed to just on Sunday morning, yeah, it matters because, again, it shows where your faith is. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 24. Verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, um, be warmed and filled without giving them the things that are needed for the body, what good is that? So also by faith itself, it, is, it does not have works, is dead. So faith without works is dead. You can profess your love for Jesus all day, all night. You could post it on Twitter, on Facebook, have a Snapchat about how much you love the Lord. And when your faith is tested, are you walking it? And that test of faith isn't just in the big things, you know, the big grand you know, if you have to go uh, for a, somebody went for a testing and you're like, okay, God, where's my faith right now? It is the little things, the, the little things that get us throughout the day. Lord, you tell me to love my enemies. Do kind to those who despitefully use me. I really don't want to. You use me. I want you to hurt. But that is not what God has commanded us to do. He said, love your enemies. Do well and bless those who despitefully use. Okay, I have faith in you, O oh God, that you're going to work this situation out. I, we don't get along, Lord, you know it. We don't see eye to eye. But God, I will have compassion. But for God, I will show love. But for God, I will do what I say my faith is. 
I call myself a Christian, so I need to walk and talk and act like a Christian, right? I cannot say I am a vegetarian and I eat steak all day and all night. That is not a vegetarian, right? So if I'm going to say I love the Lord, then that's how I must deal with the world. Now, I can despise the sin, but the sinner I must embrace. Not beating somebody up for their slips and their falls, but yes, correcting a brother in a fault, but you do it gently. Huh? But do it. But do it. Don't watch somebody bash their head up against the wall and say nothing. Say, oh, well, I'm not my brother's keeper. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You speak the truth in love. An individual makes their decision. You pray with them in faith. You do what God has told you to do, and you keep walking in your purpose as they will walk in theirs. Because, again, we can't push people before their time. Because sometimes we want people to be somewhere right now. Get there right now. But do we trust in God for him to work his timing? To say, look, I know when they need to arrive, and I know when they're going to arrive, but what I need for you to do is not step outside of yourself. Don't step outside of your own season. Continue to be my light and let my light shine. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's let it shine, saints. We want to be doers, not just hearers of the word. Because guess what? When you get in that parking lot, someone's phone's going to ring, and you're going to be tested. You're going to get home, something's going to happen. Oh, it's going to come up. God, I, I said, I, I have faith in you, and my, my faith is my works. So, you know, I'm going to show it, right? Because I'm going to show my faith through my works. Okay. Okay. Now, again, we don't have to just speak sweetness and kindness and things that are untrue to one another. We're never supposed to do that. But let us season our words with kindness. Right? Many things that come from us. May we be mindful of the, uh, what we're trying to do. What is our goal? What is our purpose? Amen. Verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe in shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Ha! <sighs> and it goes on to talk about Abraham and how he walked out his faith, how he showed his faith when God said, I need you to, to sacrifice your son. Yeah. I told you that I'm going to make you a father of many nations, but I need you to take your son and I need you to sacrifice him to me. He didn't hide his son. He didn't steal him off to another country. He said, the Lord will provide. When they got up there, you know, the Lord will provide the sheep. He walked it out. Your faith is what you do. When God calls you to do something, do you do it? Or do you come up with 20 excuses as why you can't? I'm shy. I don't speak well. I can't read well. I don't, I don't really like people. I can't do it today. I need a nap. I don't know. My cat just ran out the house, and I need to go get my cat. God bless your kitty cat. But if God has called you to do something, you want to be expedient and do it right now. God may place somebody on your heart. Pray for them. Call them. Reach out to them. Right? He may have a ministry dwelling and just building up in you. And you, every week, you say, I really want to ask somebody about it, but mm, no, I'm going to do that next week. Next week may not come for you. It may be in this moment, on this day, that you are to do that thing. Do not wait. Do not waste time. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The purpose of life, to do the good works that God has called us to do. And yes, there is great enjoyment in life when we do that. It's not boring. We had a good time this morning, right? We had the kids up here singing. We were like, yes. We can be joyous. Uh, we can we connect. We have a wonderful time. We are fed well. Huh. And we are given what we need to get through to the next day, to the next week, to the next month. And we're responsible, each and every one of us, to ensure that we are feeding our spirit man. 
Don't just look to your leaders to say, okay, what you gonna feed me today? When the Lord said, now I know everybody who had a smartphone, go ahead and put their little Bible app on their phone. What did you feed yourself with? Uh, when you woke up this morning, did you acknowledge the Lord? Did you spend some time talking with him? Because see, uh, this is a race. Our faith is a walk and a race. Hebrews 12 and 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Peter on that water. Looking unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, didn't accept the crown of king on the hill after he fed all those people, who didn't take an easier way out, no, 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 but he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Saints, let us run this race of faith. Let us show with our works what we profess with our mouths. May we be a light in this dark time. May we trust in the Lord that he will do each and everything that he said he would do. Never leave us, never forsake us. Fulfill his promises for us. Fulfill his purposes for us. Be our strong tower. Be who we can run into and hide. He is our secret place, saints. May we seek out our secret place, trusting him to deliver us. Us, hallelujah in dark times and in the dark days and allowing us to profess Jesus Christ because there will come a time where someone wants to know where does your light come from and you say my light comes from the Lord amen mm.